Hey guys, Jacob Dupre here. Today we're going to talk about walking a bass line in your left hand in jazz. Let's jump in. So before getting in and playing actual bass lines, we should talk a little bit about what bass lines are, uh, what they're trying to do, uh, what a good bass line does, um, and just the kind of general theory behind it. A bass line, really, I like to think about it is typically a lot of times in jazz anyway, you're, you're improvising quarter notes in your left hand, right? I mean, because that's probably what you've heard the most. You're used to hearing this, right? If it's a swing, you know, one, two, three, four, one, two, like that, that's usually what you're hearing. Um, and typically it's a lot of scalar motion, right? So when we say scalar motion, we mean notes moving by a step. So either a whole step or a half step. But bass lines also have skips in them as well, which is uh, any interval larger than a step, right? Um, so when you're beginning though, there's a really great exercise that I learned uh, that the famous jazz bass player Ron Carter uh, actually teaches his students and something that, that I learned from him. Um, and it's, it, it really limits you when you first start walking bass lines because you saw when I, what I just did there, I was using chromaticism, um, I wasn't just staying like in any one scale and that's a little bit more advanced but to really walk a good bass lines you have to understand what a bass line's doing um, and you have to understand what basic chords you're playing. So very simple, something I always like to start with is the blues, right? Um, so what this exercise does, what Ron Carter's exercise does, is it makes you only use the notes that are in those chords, right? I think the most basic version of it is really just using triads. So that would be, since in blues, if you have one, four, five blues, you're only using one, three, and five in each chord. So that would be uh, C, E, and G for C7. And F, that would be uh, F, A, and C. And then G, a G triad, one, three, five, would be G, B, and D. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the whole chord. So I'm going to use the whole seven chord. So that's the triad plus the flat seven for the dominant chords. And the whole point of this exercise is you want to only use the notes in those chords. You want to try to think about uh, the sort of melodic quality of the bass line. You don't want to make too many big leaps or jumps that don't make sense. And the most important thing is you want the root of the chord to be on the beat, right? So you want to challenge yourself to do that because if you weren't walking a bass line, uh, what's the most important function of the bass line? Well, it's to give us the root of the chord, right? That's typically, you know, you get more advanced bass players, especially acoustic bass players in jazz, and they might be all over the map. Depends on what genre you're in, but for, for mostly for like if you're playing a blues or you're playing a typical standard or swing, what the bass line is doing is defining the bottom of the chord. It's giving you the root. So if the chord is C7, you're going to get a C down in that range, probably on one of that beat where the chord happens, right? So you want that. That's what you want. So the most basic bass line you could play is just literally playing the root on every chord. So if you've got what we call a 1, 4, 5 blues, so 1 being C7, 4 being F7, G being G7, the most basic bass line you could play is just playing the roots. So the, that's the most important note in the bass line, is getting the root and, and moving with each chord, right? And then when you want to walk a bass line, you fill it in. Um, so now, back to that exercise. So that exercise, say you take a slower tempo, and remember you got to try just to use the notes that are in, in that chord. So C7, F7, and G7. And you can't use any other notes. So don't try to get chromatic, don't try to walk up scales or any of that kind of stuff. Just stay in the notes in that in that chord. And it's actually very hard to do. It's pretty hard for me too. It's, it's kind of a challenge. Anything you can do that puts you in a box like that and limits you will make you better. It's, it's worth your time. So let me just demonstrate how that would be. So one, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. 
Now, honestly, I probably should have done it a little bit slower because I, I did make one mistake. I played one note that wasn't in F7 in there. Um, but it's a challenging exercise, and my favorite part of what I just actually did was, and something a lot of bass players will look for, is how to create a pattern, right? So I found this little arpeggiation pattern using just the triad. When I got to the G7 chord, I played this. And then when I went to F7, I played the same pattern in F. But what I did do well was make sure that the root was on the one of every beat, right? So. Now, and again, the point is, you know, I probably, I wouldn't play a bass line like that. I wouldn't just use those notes, those basic notes in the chord. But just like learning voicings and root position to really have a concept for the chord before you start adding more colorful stuff, bass lines are the same way. You have to understand the most important notes of the chord and how to fit them in there rhythmically. And, you know, and also, especially for piano players, you want to learn how to play bass lines with your left hand, check out bass players. Don't just check out piano players walking bass lines. I, I, again, this exercise, Ron Carter, great bass player, not a piano player came up with that. Um, so you, you gotta be willing to study bass players. Okay, so now you've done that. Say you've done it slow tempos, you really got a handle, you've got those basic notes of the chord under your fingers. Well now you can start to get into more advanced uh, scalar motions using a little chromaticism um, to make these lines sound more idiomatic, sound more like a real jazz bass line that a lot of uh, jazz bass players would play. So what you want to do is kind of learn typical progressions leading to certain uh, chords. So in a blues, we'll stay in C, uh, in a C blues. The first two chords we have C7, F7, right? So C7. Now in a lot of jazz bass lines, it's very typical to approach the root of the next chord. So remember we said we want to put the root on the one of the, of the measure. So in this case, we want to get to F on the beat of measure two. That's our target, as we want to hit F on, on beat one of measure two. And typically, you're going to approach that note by a half step from either direction, or by a step, right? So if you're walking a scale bass line, a scalar type bass line, a very typical approach to that second measure will be this right here. Right, so if we count one, two, three, four. Right? Like that. Um, now, you could also do the same thing, but approach it from, from above. So if you start on this C and go down. Right? So see, both of those gave me four notes, so I could have one note on each beat, walk in the bass line, and then landing on F. Um, and there's tons of variations, obviously. I mean, I could do... Or I could do... But see, that's why practicing those arpeggiations before that the Ron Carter exercise is important because that means you can go back and forth from using more skips and you know playing along uh, the, the uh, chords, or you can do the more scalar stuff using chromatic notes. So a sample bass line I might do, say we're going to keep going, so we're starting at the beginning, one, two, three, four. Okay, so that got us to the third measure, which is C7. So three measures, we have C7 in measure one, then F7 in measure two, and then measure three, we have C7 again. And what I did was use the same chromatic approach. And you you're, use your ears, you can hear that that sounds pleasing. It sounds right to approach a dominant chord, this, C, this F7, from below like that, from that chromatic thing coming up half steps up to it. Or... Both of those sound pleasing to us, it sounds correct. So basically what I did was come from underneath the F, chromatically, and then did the same thing going back to C. So say, same thing, three half steps below, to F, and then to C. Right? So now we've, we've built this bass line to get us through these measures. So. One thing to remember too is I'm basing a lot of the basic motion that I'm playing off of what's called the mixolydian mode. So it sounds very complicated. If that word freaks you out and you don't know a lot about modal theory, don't worry about it because it's very simple. If you understand a major scale, and understanding a C major scale is easy because it's literally just 
all the white notes. It's just from C to C. All the Mixolydian scale is in C would be taking that B and lowering it to B flat because just like a C7 chord is a C major 7 with the 7th lowered, if you take the major scale that goes with the, that chord, so C major 7 the chord and C major the scale, you just lower the 7. So you get C major uh, scale, the scale, and then just lower that 7. So when you walk in bass lines, you're using that mode, that major seven, that major scale with a lowered seven as your main notes to choose from. And then what you're doing after that is you're adding these chromatic notes in between. So like I did in that bass line I just showed you, I added the flat three as a passing tone between two and three. So Again, we assign numbers to scale, so we have one, two, three, C, D, and E, so I'm adding that E flat between those. And then I'm adding B flat in between, well actually when we're on F7, I'm adding the B natural, which is a chromatic, uh, more dissonant note in that key. So that's, that's kind of, that's really kind of the concept. It's taking these mixolydian modes, these major, major scales with lowered seven, and then using chromatic pitches in between them. So I'm just going to go through really slowly through the rest of the blues and use these techniques, use playing skips based off the chords, using notes from the mixolydian mode, and then with some chromatic pitches in between, and then I'm going to mix them all together. And mixing those kind of three approaches together is how you'll get a more typical sounding jazz bass line. So here we go. Do it really slow. One, two, three, four. Okay, cool. Now, I didn't plan to play that bass line exactly like that, and if I did it again, I'd probably play it a little bit different, but the thing is, is when you internalize these techniques, all, all of the three, the three things I was talking about before, you can start to improvise, and that's really all, like I said, a bass line in jazz, you're, you're improvising quarter notes in, in a lower octave, and you're trying to define the chord with the roots, and try to find creative ways to get from chord to chord, and, and use variation. So some things to point out, and again, I'm, I'm going to start saying in videos, go back, watch this again. Remember, you can slow it down. You can, you can go into YouTube and slow this down if you want to see what I just did slower. But I'm going to break it down for you anyway. Um, I liked when I did, uh, I, I varied some things with some arpeggiation. So I used scales in the beginning. But then I did sort of a arpeggiation of C major. Like that. And then, if I remember correctly, then I did a walk down, so a scalar walk down to F. And then that got me to F7. And then I did another arpeggiation. Then I used that chromatic walk up that I did in the beginning. And then I used some, a different, a pattern I hadn't uh, used yet, but similar to the, uh, the walk down into the F, but then I added a chromatic pitch so I could get to G. And remember the blues is 12 bars, right? I, there's actually a video I've done on blues voicings. You should go check that one out if you want to learn more about the blues as well. Um, but that's, that's the proper technique. That's, that's the jumping off point uh, for jazz bass lines. While I was saying that most of these bass lines is just it's improvising quarter notes, right, and defining the chords, um, I was doing some things that weren't just quarter note rhythm, right? I was adding some things, and what I like to call them kind of little skips, right? And you want to swing them. It, it kind of, uh, it, a lot of times if you're playing with a drummer, it'll go along with the swing and the ride cymbal, ding, 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 ga ding, 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 ga ding, ga ding. So the bass line, that ding, 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 ga ding, 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 ga ding, 
get dang. The bass could be doing the same thing, but while it's playing notes, but ding, bing, 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 gang, 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 right? So those kind of skips could be something like this. So that that bass line we kind of broke down in the very beginning. Uh, you could do something like this. So you saw that little skip I did in there. I'll do it again. So. So I threw in an F in there to kind of add that little skip, like I called it, that little, that little swing in there. Another place I like to do it is right here. Some bass players will get really crazy with them. There's actually, I have a friend of mine that like has the craziest skips or drops like that I've ever heard. It'll, it'll be like this. Maybe you wouldn't do that. That's a little. That's a little crazy. You might freak everybody out if you do that. Um, but that's the basic idea. And and a lot of times, especially if you're, if you happen to be walking uh, this bass line and you are playing with a drummer, but maybe you don't have a bass player. You know, you want to listen to that ride cymbal. How how that ride cymbal is swinging is how you want to swing with those skips, right? Remember, that's just kind of a little extra on the top. That's kind of a cherry on top. The most important thing is those quarter notes and you want to be locking in with the rhythm because you're if you're if you're walking the bass line your left hand you're the anchor you're you're what's helping everybody keep time or even helping yourself keep time because i know a lot of times my right hand will be more fluid with rhythm especially if i'm soloing but that left hand has got to be the rock you know So I was like kind of trying to throw my left hand out, off that time. I was doing some weird stuff, kind of playing with the time. But you got to keep that time. You got to keep that time in your body. Bass player and the drummer and really everybody, you got to be like a metronome. Thanks for checking out Walking Left Hand Bass with me. If you have anything else you'd like me to cover that I didn't cover in this video about bass lines, I know I covered the blues this time, but if you'd like to see me do it over other tunes, other jazz standards, maybe with more complicated harmonies, anything like that, please comment. I love seeing what you guys are interested in, and thanks again for watching.